Welcome to my YouTube channel where we demonstrate and discuss everything related to theatrical and entertainment production crafts. Please subscribe to get the latest updates, posts, and demonstrations. While I will focus primarily on safety in the shops and comprehensive training and operating procedures for tools and machinery, I'll also demonstrate and discuss practical applications like flat and platform construction, scene painting, and more. If you'd like to see something specific, please let me know in the comments. Once again, please subscribe and power up the alert bell to get the most up-to-date notifications about new content. I have a stack of platforms here. They're all rejects for one reason or another. They're not rejects necessarily because of age, but more rejects because of construction style or non-standard stock equipment. This one is also unique in that it's not just made out of plywood on the lid, but all of the framing pieces were made out of plywood. So all these side pieces were made out of plywood as well. And you can do that. That's perfectly fine. That's a common construction material and method. I like to use one by six for my framing and three quarter inch plywood for the lid because I think the one by six is cheaper or it used to be cheaper. I have to do the math now and make sure it's still cheaper. Buying one by 12 and ripping it to five and a quarter inches is my least expensive method as opposed to buying three quarter inch plywood and ripping that to five and a half inches. And not only that, the solid pine lumber is going to be lighter. Since I built all this framing out of three quarter inch plywood, I've effectively doubled the weight of my platform. And again, if I'm building this as a one-off for a film set, for a theater show, for a whatever, and it's gonna be used once and thrown away, use whichever technique you like. But since we are building stock and maintaining stock and reusing stock, this method is not going to be one that's going to be conducive to the longevity of this piece and of the stock. Now the plywood may last a little bit longer with a lot of screws going into it than the one by. The one by when you screw through it a lot, it's going to chew it up. It's gonna have a lot of uh, holes in it. It's gonna to start to lose its integrity. The plywood will last longer uh, drilling a lot of holes for attaching legs and screwing platforms together to each other. So it does have an advantage there. Uh, I just don't like to use it because it's heavier and usually it's more expensive. I'm gonna retask this one into some permanent shelving and prop storage because it is still a nicely built platform, but uh, it's not one I wanna maintain in my stock. These are some more platforms I'm going to recycle into storage and props and use them to replace some old falling apart storage shelves. But they are also not built properly. They are built, again, with plywood lids and plywood frames. And then they are also missing a lot of pieces of uh, support. There is a support here, and it looks like there were some screws. There are some screws on this one. The other one behind it does not have those middle supports, and that's essential. And the screw pattern is just too far apart. And you'll see in the photo that these screws on the ends and from each of the side pieces is missing one screw at least. So they need to be built uh, properly and we need to put some more screws in the lid before I task them into a more long-term permanent storage situation. I hope that gives you some idea of how to approach platform construction and gives you some techniques you can choose to use and you'll see which ones I prefer and why I prefer those. We'll look more closely at this when we build a platform, when I get to that video and when we go over legging techniques. We'll talk about screw patterns and attachment points for different types of legs. So hope this is useful. Thank you.